Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Curious Coaches Club. That regular Monday feeling that we seem to have now. Um, hope everyone's had a good week. I certainly enjoyed the sun and got myself some uh, unfortunate burnt tan lines, but hey, this is one of the challenges that Andy Bradshaw and I have been talking about, about living closer to the equator in the southeast compared to uh, sunny Sheffield. So definitely a challenge. And well done to everybody that has managed to get themselves online. Um, you'll find that we have sent out a new link because we're trying something slightly new with a, a new version of WebEx as a platform. Um, we're still not totally happy with what we get from this as a function, but we're starting to play around as we would do uh, and encourage you guys as coaches in your general kind of coaching life to do. But we're trying something slightly new with this to see if it works. And it will automatically turn your mic and video off. So if it hasn't already, please make sure that it does. As with always, the conversations that we have today will go into Connected Coaches as the coaching forum, so we can continue the conversations there as well. But linked to today and a new link for this session, if you'd already registered for the following week, which is the Coaching Mavericks session, uh, you will get a new link for that one as well. So check that out. If you're going to use the chat box, and today is one of those sessions that we really encourage you to use the chat box because there's going to be a lot going on. Please make sure it's set to all participants. Uh, and that way, everybody will see some of the comments that we're talking about. So let's get into the content today. This is a massive topic for coaches. And I think in your working life, your home life, your parent life, all of those kind of different roles, but definitely in your coach's life, having honest conversations and sharing feedback is a massively important topic. And I'm delighted with the people that we've got on this uh, edition this week. Not just because I get to spend another hour with Andy Bradshaw, which is always a, uh, a favorite pastime of mine, but I have a book here and he's not sent on to, to uh, promote this himself, Coaching Athletes to Be the Best, but it is a knackered, dog-eared book because I've read it that much. And I'm delighted that we've got Steve Rolnick on the call today, who is the author of that book, but uh, just an absolute legend when it comes to this kind of stuff. So uh, people that don't know you, Steve, first of all, welcome. And uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Hello, hello, everybody. I'm Steve Rolnick. Uh, what can I say? I'm, I'm an ape from the Cape. In other words, I grew up in Cape Town for my first 25 years, became a clinical psychologist and have lived in Wales for many decades now. Retired a few years ago and decided I wanted to do what makes me happy, which was to work in sport. So I've landed here and um, hoping I can be of some help this afternoon. Look, uh, look. Steve, I'm, you know, fortunate to have uh, had an input into my life from you. So I, I can guarantee people will get uh, plenty from being uh, in the conversation with you today. Andy, for those of you that don't know your uh, dulcet Wirral tones, just introduce you and who you are. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, yeah, it's a very neutral accent. Probably can't place me anywhere. And <laughs> um, a senior coach developer at UK Coaching. Um, bit of a background in coaching some hockey uh, and also a little bit of uh, girls football coaching uh, more recently so that's me brilliant and i'm nick Everett, head of coaching so my role will be to kind of steer the ship and what we're going to do today is we are going to try something a bit different and one of the conversations that we have when we're reviewing the sessions is we want to really get into uh, a deep understanding of one particular topic so sometimes we're quite broad on them but today we're going to get really deep and deconstruct a piece of coaching that's important to everybody and what we're going to do is we're going to use this uh, method of Andy Bradshaw's GCSE drama skills uh, to the fore and what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to role play and live a conversation between Steve as a coach and Andy as a young performer to break it then down to look at well what it might look like and the level and detail of conversation linked to giving feedback. But 
before we crack on with that, Steve, why do we want to give feedback? <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, Nick, if I swear to God, if I could wave a magic wand, and I'm being serious, if I could wave a magic wand, it would be for every coach, teacher, nurse, parent to be skillful at doing this, because I think it's that widespread and has the potential to swing one of two ways to transform people's creativity in their lives or to depress them. And uh, it's my magic wand fantasy that this is a subject that's taken seriously. So when you suggested coming on this, I thought, oh, here we go. I'm, I'm going to enjoy this because it's a subject close to my heart, man. Cool. So tell us a bit more about why. Why is it so important, do you think? It's a brilliant question. I, I guess, Nick, you know, there's, there's a bit of a straight line between our personal values and our behavior. Okay. And we've got choices about how we express our values. And I guess I wanted to say that, how can I put it, man? I'm trying to think of a neat way of putting this. Why is this important? Look, we know it's common, um, but I think there are incredible choices that coaches, for example, face here. And so it's, I guess I'm making a call here to start with self-reflection among the people who've joined us this afternoon. You know, why do you want to give feedback? Not just, I think the, the, the subject's important, but why would you, why do you want to give feedback? And I can think of three or four alternatives here, which might prompt you, and perhaps I can just clarify them. Do you want to give feedback because you want to be, you know, as they say in education, do you want to be a sage on the stage or a guide on the side? So that's a choice and worth thinking about that when you do give feedback. Do you just want to give feedback to another athlete who needs correcting? Or are you wanting to give feedback to a person who's learning? I think there's a big difference and you'll get a different outcome. Or could I put it a bit more bluntly, Nick? Do you want to dump facts on someone by way of your feedback? Or do you want to champion their growth and choice? So I presented it this way to encourage the participants to think about it. Or how about this? What two or three words would capture for you the art of giving feedback? And I wonder what they are. And perhaps at the end of this, this seminar, I'll tell you what mine are. I've given it some thought. But what about you guys? If you had to think about, right, I'm giving feedback, what two or three words capture what for you personally is the art of doing this? So, you know, I'm just raising this question because we do have choice about how we express our personal values. And so that if everybody around us sees ourselves as sages on the stage, okay, or it gets imposed from above in the club you're in, then I think you it's like spreading a virus. I think what happens is everybody starts behaving in the same sort of way. And with that kind of orientation, I think you're going to create a toxic culture. Mm. On the other hand, if everybody shares the value that we want to really promote growth in people first, not just athletes, then that can also spread like a virus and change the culture. And, you know, Nick, how can I put it? I'll just tell you one very quick story, if I might. Yeah, go for it. Go on. That'd be okay. Yeah, absolutely. I got invited to this elite rugby club and I walked in and I walked through the door. I was hell of a nervous, you know, is it? You know, it's a new ex new experience. I haven't met these people. I was nervous, but really it was obvious to me quite soon how feedback was going to be handled in that club. Okay. And the feedback was dumped on the players and the head coach was complaining to me that they don't listen. That from the, from the strategy meeting that I observed to the practice field that I observed. And then he said, wait until you come to the match. There's just a drop off in retention. He calls it a retention problem. Right. So, but I picked, picked up the vibe the moment I walked into the place, no one greeted me. Everybody, you know, there were very, there was, there, there was, no one was joyful. I don't think I saw anyone smile the whole day I was there. And, um, 
you know, that sort of captured the culture of a place that where there was a, a shared sense of we deal with us all by dumping stuff on each other and then hoping that outcomes are going to improve. So I think there they made some choices. I don't know who was immediately responsible. And I know that you and I and Andy and all of the people participating have seen other environments in which people flourish. And most of us are probably in the messy middle somewhere in whatever club we're in. But I'm just highlighting this question because I think it's not just about feedback. It's about the personal values that we share. Mm, brilliant. Thank you. Uh, I mean, it's a really strong opening. Andy, um, what's your kind of take on that piece of, uh, of learning in the sense that do you view learning, Andy, as I've got to dump what's in my head into yours? Or do you view learning as your spotlight searching for meaning of different things around you and therefore make sense of different things in your world um definitely the the latter and i think it links to listening to steve there um the the reading and research that i've been doing around feedback just trying to open up a, a two-way conversation so listening to that dump it analogy um that's possibly more traditional feel of feedback just being one way coming from the coach it's just a a dumping you know, actually it brings it brings it to life that that word around actually i'm just i'm just chucking this at you um with no real sense of do you know what to do with it do you know how to implement it am i going to support you in in those strategies so there's an element of um, understanding that the person who's receiving the feedback, there's a responsibility there for, for them to be really engaged in it and be part of that learning process. And it's not just as easy as throwing information at them because they might not be ready, willing, motivated, or have the skills to actually action any of it. Yeah, absolutely. And Reese's question about uh, when people feed him back, haven't asked for it, might not want to receive it. I'm sure that's something that will pick up as we go through uh our, our little uh gcc drama performance that we've got today um so I, I think it's timely that we crack on into that so andy do you want to set the scene about the role that you're going to play and then how this will look and the way that we're going to do this for for everybody that's listening into the call today um we'll we'll do a piece where steve and andy will be in character and then effectively what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit pause on the conversation and they're gonna jump out of role and start to deconstruct, or Steve will, how he's done, what he's done and why he's gone about doing it in that way. And then we'll jump back into that in that kind of motive. So that's the kind of structure, but we want you to really engage in your position as somebody that's watching this going, what does this mean for me? What are the key messages that I can take from this and apply to my context? So, Andy, do you want to kind of tee up the young Andy that we're going to see now, or whatever name you choose to have for this future acting role that you've just got now? Yeah, I was chatting to Steve earlier, and to keep it simple, I am going to be Andy. Uh, so, we're going to take <laughs> take a few years, take a few years off me. I was actually thinking whether I've I've had this feedback as a young hockey player, and I'm fairly sure I did do at some point. So, um, so we're looking at. You know, mid teens, 13, 14, playing uh, an invasion game of some sorts. We'll probably say it's hockey just for, for my, my ease of um, referencing things. Um, and Steve is going to be the coach. Um, and the conversation we're going to have is about uh, me not listening to feedback and appearing basically not to be ignoring what the, the coach has been saying. Um, so the, we're summing it up with we need to have, we need to have a word here. Um, so Steve uh, has has decided that um, uh, now's the time to actually have a conversation about my uh, lack of uh, attention to what he's been saying over the past probably weeks, months, every session, pretty much. And would you like to share the three word framework that we've got on a slide before I start? Might be a good idea. It's not essential. But if you could share that single slide, because I think it's only fair to, to the uh, observers to know what framework is in my mind. But, Paul, could you pop that one up? But if it's done, it's only three words, so it's, I can easily describe it. There you go. 
There you go. So that's the sort of conceptual framework that's in my mind. Okay. And uh, probably Nick will stop us after each of those three, or I'll tell Nick when we've reached a pause. But I'm ready to go here. Yeah, the other, Paul, do you want to just move back one slide as well? The other thing for um, everyone who's listening, really, and I think this is just a, a good opportunity to use the, um, the chat box, is as you're listening to this first part of the conversation, um, just be mindful of what you're hearing, what you're seeing from me and Steve, and also what you're feeling about what you're hearing and what you're seeing. Um, so as, as you're listening in and watching and you're, um, you're feeling some stuff, pop it in the chat box. So really wanting, um, uh, really wanting to start to get a sense of actually, if you are observing this conversation for real, um, what are you taking from it? And we'll get yeah, to that. Perhaps I could also add, um, some of you might be interested in the moment to moment um, skills that are being used. And, and, and you could ask yourself, is Steve only using questions? And when I don't use questions, what am I using? Because we'll get onto that topic. I'm sure. I'm sure Nick's going to prompt it. Yeah. Brilliant. I'm ready to go. Yeah, let's go. go. That'd be okay. Andy, yeah. that, and, so I'll go now. Andy, that was your dad who dropped you off there, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, good stuff. Um, because I, I thought of I thought of having a word with you after practice last time, but then I thought, oh man, I'm knackered. You look knackered. I'd rather grab you when we're both feeling fresh, and uh, we've got a few minutes now before I have to get things organised. So I thought I'd just have a little chat with you now, if that's okay. Yeah, no, no problem at all. You know, I wanted to talk to you about how you how you're getting on in the club. And also give you some feedback about your actual play on the on, on the field. Um, so that's what I want to do. But Andy, how's it for you, man? I mean, how did you feel coming down here today? Ah, well, I feel things are going really well. Um, team seems to be playing well. Uh, I'm scoring some goals. Um, chatting to Dad, and he's like, he's really pleased with how things are going. So at the moment, um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm fairly happy actually. Uh, so that's great. So you were looking forward to coming down. Uh, yeah, no, I, I love my football. I live for it. Um, yeah, if we could do more of it, it'd be, it would be even better. Right. And you're in, so you're enjoying your time in the club generally. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I look at it about, you know, dad's happy, I'm happy, uh, team's doing well. Um, you know, yeah. generally, I, I think, I mean, those are the things that, that make me happy as well. Yeah, for sure. And I can see you getting on really well with some of the other some of the other players. I mean, it seems like you've got friends here. Uh, yeah, no, it's I mean, it's I, I really enjoy it. And I think, you know, winning helps. Um, you know, we're, we're, we get on, uh, you know, things are going all right. Yeah, I'd say and say so you, you're comfortable in the club. That's the mo that's probably the most important thing for us. Yeah, I mean, I mean, as long as we continue to do well, um, definitely I'm all up for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what, what I wanted to talk to you about was actually also a little bit about your game, okay? Because I'm like the coach and I wanted to talk to you about your game, okay? Can I do that, yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah. You see what I mean? Well, how, the, you know, like, because I'm always kind of talking to different players about this and that and this and that position. And I wanted to get some quality time, not just with you, but with all, all the players. But here I've got some quality time with you. And I wanted to talk to you about your positional play. OK, and I'm wondering, like, how you see your own development. I mean, it's quite a tough question to ask you. Right. But how what, what, what do you want to get really better at? There's a there's a hell of a question. Eh? What would you like to get better at uh, about your game? Well, I mean, goals is a huge thing for me. Yeah. Uh, that, I mean, I, I've got a chart at home. I'm tracking what I do. Uh, you know, it, that, it helps the team winning. I think the other players are looking to me to score goals. So, yeah, yeah if I could do more of that, that would yeah. be, be brilliant. So anything that, that can help you be sharper in front of goal and do the right thing there is going to be, it's going to be exciting and rewarding for you. Um, yeah, yeah, for certain. Yeah. yeah, if you can help, well, yeah. if anyone can help with that, that'd be great. Dad's always talking to me about, you know, how, how I can just get in those right positions. That's, yes. you know, that's, that's what I do. 
Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Well, can I give you uh, can I can I give you a little bit of feedback now about what I'm noticing about positional play for you? Yeah, I mean, is this is this something you're saying with all the players? Depends. Depends. Everybody's different. Okay. Um, I wouldn't like to say, you know, what I do know is that I, uh, I enjoy watching you play. I really do. I enjoy your goals. I'm so glad you've come here in a good space here with your dad this morning. And uh, I want to just see you score more of them. Brilliant. Okay. I'll... Yeah. Let me tell you what I've noticed. Okay, Nick, I'll stop there. Okay. So that's me through the first of what I described as this ask, offer, ask sequence. In truth, uh, 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 colleagues, this is a circular process, okay? But the logic is, is, is simply this, that before launching into giving someone feedback, information, or advice, I it doesn't really matter what word you use, I don't think, um, it's best to engage. That's the logic. And so that ask phase is designed to connect as best I can with him. I'm not convinced that happened, but there you go. You, you know, you, this was very rough and ready, but I'm open to comments from anyone now, but that was the rationale. In other words, what does he think? He's 14, so it's a bit tricky, actually. But what does he feel about his positional play and the vibe I get I mean, I could step out a role here and it can tell you what vibe I get from him, but maybe it's time for me to just keep quiet and see what others think. But I have got a vibe from him that I wanted to share with you. Nick, you're on mute. So I am. Uh, what I wanted to do really was just kind of break down that little bit and, uh, and, and go through some of the tactics there because there's, there's a couple of bits that, um, that people have questioned within the within the chat box which is brilliant because knowing you steve there's a rationale about why you do stuff and this is what we want to try and do so people will have a view of something and we want to try and challenge that so that's perfect so tell us about how you tried to open the conversation because you used a particular kind of question and start line and then why did you choose to go with that god you're gonna have to try and remember but look i i, I started off that wondering how my feedback would land with this guy and how he would respond so and i thought whoa 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 i'm going to get the timing right here so i don't want to do it after practice because i'm just too tired i'm a bit wound up he's wound up so i thought i'll chat to him when he comes fresh i wondered about the location i waited until his dad had driven off i thought you know this is this is him and me time and i want to try and improve our like little bubble so i wondered about those things then really the, the opening was designed to connect with him and to check in that he's happy about coming down here and looking forward to it and um is enjoying his football or hockey okay and i got that vibe from him that he was which you know is really important because if he'd come in feeling down as a human being as a young guy then that's gonna very much tailor uh, where I go with the feedback, but I was delighted because he sounds like he's he's up for it, and so yeah, the, the opening I can't remember the details to be honest because I was right in it. You know, you better. Yeah, I mean, what I liked Steve was, but was by doing that and checking how he was and where he was, and this is a really important time. So with everything going on with COVID, we've got no idea of the backstory to other people's lives at home and everything going on there. But what I thought you did really neatly was. You start to gauge where he was at rather than just launch straight into giving feedback you ask some really good questions to try and understand where he was at yeah i mean my ideal which i didn't reach was to talk to him about positional play so that i could ask him my golden question which i didn't get to which was how would he like to improve his positional play what are his ideas what needs has he got to improve his positional play? And I didn't get there because I got hit by this sort of thing. Yeah, my dad and I have chatted about it and he's talked to me about the position. And I thought, oh, here we go. You know, he's got a fairly clear idea. His dad's got a clear idea and it's going to run up against mine. And instead of, you know, meeting force with force, I would just park that because now's my chance in a moment to give him the feedback. 
Yeah. So in that sense, I fell short of where I wanted to go. But hell, the guy's 14. He's got a close relationship with his dad. I want to nurture that. Um, but then I've got a view and I feel like I need to confront him. The question is, how do I confront him in a way that's constructive? And I'm hoping that having had a, developed a reasonable connection with him, I think it took about three or four minutes. So it's not some big deal. You know, it didn't take mm. long that he might be more open to kind of wrestling with this positional issue with me, which is going to be complicated. Um, in a way, I'm not looking forward to the conversation now, but, you know, that's yeah, what I landed. It's quite tough. I, I, absolutely. And one of the points that was raised earlier by Corey about probably not the best time to give feedback to a child when they get there, I think what you did was you outlined about why it possibly was a good time, because at the end of the session when you're tired, kids tired, they've got to get home, they've got school work to do. Actually, if you set up arrival activities and kids can go off and do stuff, it's a really good time. And especially when you've connected, understood where he was at. The other thing there was towards the end, there was starting to be a couple of more closed questions. Again, was that deliberate in how you kind of, ch why you chose to use those? I'm trying to lead into the actual positional play stuff. Uh, possibly I'm also getting nervous. And when I get nervous, I might, you know, ask more closed questions. I'm conscious of doing that. Look, about the timing, I'm not a sports coach. OK, you might, this, this, your colleagues might be quite right. It's the worst time. I don't, I don't know. All I'm saying is I gave thought to timing. You know, that's all that's important, I think. You know, what ch time you choose is up to you. But I just wanted to highlight, I did go through that in my mind, for better or worse. But I might have asked a few closed questions. I think I was getting a bit nervous. Maybe I was also wanting to zoom in now on positional play. You know? mm. But I think I said to him, how do you feel about your positional play? Oh, me and my dad are quite happy. Oh, mm. yeah. How would yeah. you like to improve your positional play? That's an open question. And oh, I want to score lots of goals. OK, yeah, no, I know. And I want to enjoy that with you. But you know, so now mm. I have to, I have to, I told him at the beginning that I wanted to give him feedback about it. So I was trying to be authentic and honest and not play a game with him. So he knew that that's what the conversation would lead to eventually. And tell us about the bit in the middle, because you used a number of almost kind of statement like sentences as opposed to questions to kind of affirm things, but they also had this real kind of empathic undertone to it. So tell us a little bit about why you chose those then. Yeah, I said to myself at the beginning, um, and this is just me as a, as a, as a, as a communication, I suppose, uh, uh, person, that if all I use are questions, this conversation is going to sound unnatural. If all I did was ask questions, it would sound, it would soon sound like an investigation. So I must use as many empathic listening statements, they statements, not questions, as I can. And I guess I'm reasonably skilled at that. I've practiced it a hell of a lot. So the conversation then gets starts to feel much more normal. It's not too investigative, because I'm trying to capture his experience. I'm trying to stand in his shoes and then say something to him in the form of a statement that captures my understanding of what his experience is. And if he goes, yeah, 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 then that's him knowing that I have got it, that I understand him. And that improves our relationship and the empathic connection between us. I think the, the exciting thing for me here is, it was the realization that, and I'm, I'm talking about decades, that the harder I worked at the skill, the briefer the conversations were. So that listening, in my mind, isn't sitting back and hearing. Listening is making these active statements. And the better I got at it, the shorter was the conversation. Yeah, it's a, re it's, it's a real challenge, I think. And um, it might feel a bit kind of, I guess, awkward and clunky for some people at the time that might be thinking that that's they're not their kind of normal flow of things. So what, what, what advice would you give people to kind of start to kind of go through that process? It's a hell of a good point. It, 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 it matches quite well the challenge you might have had with this Andy guy when he first came to the club and learning new skills. You know, you try and set up a scenario whereby the, the kids can practice these things and get better and better. And 
the scenario for your uh, colleagues, um, everybody's going to be different. I think step one is to, first of all, conceptually to understand what these statements are about. So there's a bit of learning, you know, and I hope I managed to convey that a moment ago. Then you need to dive in. And I would choose the easiest conversations first. For example, I could do it with you, but I won't because I know we've got a shortage of time. I could ask you about your favorite place in the world. Okay. Then I, then I sit there thinking, right, I can ask you questions. And if I ask you one question after another, you're not going to feel like we're really getting there. If, mm. however, I can capture the essence of what you're saying, that's what I mean by a statement, and hand it back to you, you effectively become my teacher by way of your response. So I learn from you, you, you. Yeah, it's a bit like that, but maybe it's not. So I try another statement. So these are guesses or hypotheses that you make to try and get at what it is someone, what would be your favorite place and why. So I would choose an easy situation every day and try and see if you can capture the essence of what someone's saying and hand it back to them. And have a look at quality television or radio announcers. You'll find they use them all the time. It's a natural part of conversation that tends to be forgotten in educational settings where experts like doctors or coaches and teachers are trained to ask questions as if they are the magic key. And I guess here's an analogy, Nick. You know, it's like knocking on someone's door a question. How did you feel about coming down here today with your dad? Okay. Mm. Then what happens is when you when they invite you into the house. Okay. The, the question's like knocking on the door, but what happens when you go into their house or into their world? That's where the listening statements are very useful. Mm. Yeah, brilliant. Um, we seem to have uh, a slight issue with Andy and his Wi-Fi, which seems to have gone down. See, this is what happens when you live in uh, in Sheffield. It's a real challenge up in the hills there as well. So we'll try and get Andy back as soon as we can. But let's move on to the next section now. So you want to kind of move into the offer piece. So yeah. I, will, I will jump in and be uh, Daniel Craig until we get Andy back. Yeah. So let's pick up the conversation and carry it on from now. Then. Yeah, Andy, I wanted to have a word with you, my man. You know, um, I noticed this last time in the last practice and, and, and a couple of the matches. And I get to feel, to be honest, two ways about how you're getting on. On the one hand, I just share your joy at those goals. Genuine, genuine joy at those goals. And uh, I cannot say more than that. It's really, it's really, you know, it's so brilliant to see you succeeding and, and really being so creative in front of goal. On the other hand, I kind, of, I kind of feel that I noticed that you're not in the position that I thought we'd agreed. And it's like a puzzle to me, to be honest, because um, I, I think to myself, has Andy not understood it? Or has Andy understood it and he's chosen a different route? Okay. Now, whatever's the case, I don't mind, you know, as long as you and I can, can form a good connection and talk about this and we'll learn from each other what the best way for you to score the goals are but i kind of it, to be honest i thought hang on i've told andy like more than once right to avoid swinging wide too often you know and yet you swing wide right mm. <laughs> and i feel like running onto the field and say andy we've agreed the team's agreed right you keep you keep yourself a bit narrow and 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 and, and let Nor normie come up the up the left there let him swing wide and um so I just wanted to be honest with you, and I'm wondering, it's a puzzle, you know, that, and we can solve it together. It's not something we have to solve now. But what I want to know is like how you feel about this. And uh, that's what I want to turn to next. What do you really feel? Okay, stop there, because that's the end of the office. Please. Okay, come on in. So let's, um, let's, let's break that bit down then. Um, so how, how did you kind of choose to to take things through in that kind of way? Um, first of all, I, I tried to connect with him as a as a person. Yeah. Who gives me joy. OK, mm. so it was like. Uh, you know, his scoring of goals is something we share. It's a joy we share. And. Um, and I also wanted to be honest with him and authentic. So I presented it to him, look, I feel two ways here. On the one hand, I share your joy about the goals and I love it. 
it's fantastic to see how you're growing. On the other hand, there's this positional thing. And I try to not say, look, you are out of position. I try to avoid that kind of exchange and try to present it to him just as a puzzle. But I mm. also was very honest with you, you know, that, that, that I don't understand. I want to run onto the field and stop you. So he, he's perfectly clear. Um, Nick, I think one thing that's really important, which I don't think I did particularly well with, was to emphasize choice. Because in the way, it, it is his choice. I can't change his behavior. You know, I might, mm. I might drop him from the team or whatever, but it, it's his choice about whether he swings wide or not. I'm not on the field. And um, I might have said to you, if I could have improved that, I would have said to you, Andy, listen, there's no one way to become a good footballer. You know, and this is just my, uh, a few ideas from me. And really, you've got choice about how you want to develop as a footballer. And my, my role is to guide you, buddy. It's not to tell you what to do. So don't get the wrong idea. But let's let's see what you think. I'm, I would have loved to have said that. Because that enhances his autonomy and his sense of choice and his sense of this is something that I'm in charge of. Yeah, I think what you did, was, I think there were two things I really liked in that. Was was one the statement that you that you opened the rationale piece with was gives me joy, and sometimes as coaches I think we often focus on the things that that the, the kids, the players, the, whoever we're working with, we focus on the things that they can't do rather than the things that we can do, because a lot of people are kind of inbuilt to try and fix and solve because they often think that the coach is that like you said that you know download of information into someone else's head and. But what I thought you did was you really neatly started it with kind of the, the good things that you saw as well. But then you 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 wanted to kind of, well, it felt like for me that you wanted to kind of direct it somewhere, but there was an element of you still wanted to understand what I thought about it first. Yeah. Um, which I think is a really nice way of doing it. I mean, I know I can only see one chat at a time. I noticed one colleague quite rightly saying, well, why didn't you ask him why are you doing it? Okay. Mm. Now I'm working in these phases, right? Um, boom, boom. I ask and listen first. Then I be clear about what the feedback is. Now in the third phase, the why is going to become clear. And mm. I didn't want to ask a confrontational question. I presented it as a puzzle, but I could have said, look, I, I wonder why you're doing this. Of course, it's a damn useful question, but to the extent that our connection is a good one, He'll tell me now if he's comfortable. If he's not comfortable, he'll bullshit me. Well, then yeah, sure. that tells me he's my teacher. He's telling me I don't trust you enough. I don't feel well enough connected to you right now. So that yeah, is that the is that the piece where you know it's down for the to the to Andy in that situation to give them their why to share that. That's what's going to happen now when we hit the third phase. Okay, one Great. way or another, and and if I don't get anything useful, it's not. A problem with Andy. It's a problem. The challenge is it, that's feedback to me that I need to improve my relationship and communication with Andy because I'm I'm the I'm the coach, I'm the professional if you like. So if there's a problem, I don't mm. blame, I don't blame Andy at all. I don't label him. I don't blame him. I do my best not to drop him, but I keep the conversation going. Car park, coffee room, corridor, wherever it is. Mm. Okay, cool. So let's um, we've got Andy back. So uh, let's let's jump back into the conversation. Andy, are you good to go? That's to check. You can hear me. Yeah, yeah, we, we can hear you. Cool. Okay, all right. I'll, let's uh, let's press play again. Over to you, Steve, or yes. Andy, or whoever. So Andy, it, it's now up to you, my man. You know, I, I'm wondering what you feel about this. Um. Yeah, I, I think. I'm struggling who to listen to. Okay. Okay. So I know you've been telling me some stuff. My dad telling me stuff, and I, I just um, I struggle with you know who who to listen to most. Okay. Okay. So it, it's actually a bit difficult for you because your dad's saying one thing. And I might be saying another thing, and you're not sure which 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 of these to choose or to listen to. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So this can't be such a comfortable conversation for you because you must be wondering, well, what the hell should I do now? Dad says one thing and coach says another. Yeah. He's really positive with me and he's like, yeah, you're doing a great job. And now you're telling me that maybe I'm not. Yeah. So it's like I'm telling you that you're not doing a good job. That's how you get to feel. Um, I feel a little bit like that, yeah. Yeah, you feel a little disappointed um, to be to be told this. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's not happened before, so yeah, it's a bit it's a bit weird, really. Yeah, and so we might we might talk about enjoying the goals that you score, but then to hear this sort of feedback makes you feel, wow, you know, what more can I do? Yeah, I, I suppose it's. It's just the first time this has happened. So, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, just, I'm struggling a bit. Yeah, yeah. And so, I, I think you and I are faced with a puzzle here about what is the what is the best route for you to take. Do you swing wide as often as you do? And your dad feels that's probably quite a good idea. And to be fair to both of you, you do as well. And and you and you're comfortable with the goals you're scoring. Um, and here I'm suggesting maybe don't swing so wide so often. Yeah. Um, and again, I've probably been doing what I thought was best, maybe. So whatever your dad and I feel, you were, you were comfortable with it. Well, it goes back to that, I'm a story, and yeah, I've sort of been I think I have been, so I sort of maybe I wasn't looking enough. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. I can see this. It sounds like it's not easy for you. And, um, you know, I must say that um, I've got huge respect for the way you are able to sort of listen to your dad, hear me, be so clear and honest with me in this conversation about it. And um, I, I'm wondering where to go next. Because what, uh, you know, the most important thing I want to say to you is that um, I really enjoy having you around here and you're a great part of the team and you're contributing to good results. That's the big picture. This question about positional play is something that is a puzzle that we want to try and solve. And have you got any ideas yourself about how to solve it? I've got a couple that I wanted to suggest. But, I, you know, what, what makes the most sense to you to say to me, Steve, just back off. Let me play my natural game. If you said that to me, I'd, I'd say absolutely fine. But you might say uh, something else. What do you think is best, hey, Andy? I mean, one thing is probably just to listen a bit more for me. So I'm saying I'm probably doing my own thing a little bit. Um, now, maybe I listen to my dad more than I listen to you. I think it's, it's nice to actually have this conversation and for someone that's bit of interest in me. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, Nick, I, I, I didn't hear Andy very well here, but I'm going to improvise, all right? Look, um, can I make a suggestion, Andy? Can I make a suggestion about how to proceed? Yeah, yeah. Number one, play your natural game, knowing that I support you. Wherever that takes you, wide or not, you play your natural game and I'm going to support you. OK, that's the most important message I want you to go home with. Right? Whether you score goals or not, play your natural game. Number two, why don't we solve the problem with your dad? So that's something I want us to you to think about, if you don't mind. Right. Have a word with your dad and say, Steve says, why don't the three of us get our heads together and see where it takes us? OK. Because your dad, your dad is a keen observer of your play, and I think it might it might help all of us if we brought him into it. So that's a suggestion from my side, but the choice is yours, Andy. Knowing that the number one thing is, I want you to enjoy being in this club and to enjoy your game and to play your natural game. Uh, to be fair, I think I'd be keen to do that. Um... You know, he, he wants me to do well. Uh, he, he definitely tells me that. Um, 
I wonder, I don't know, would I ask or would you ask? I'm not, I'm not sure. What's you, what do you, what would, what would be easiest for you? Um, I, I wonder if it's something we can have a chat about after training with him. I didn't hear that, but maybe when he picks you up after practice today, I can come up with you and we can have a word. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think I think that would work. Yeah, and we can either chat then or we can chat some other time. It doesn't matter to me as long as I have a feeling that you're coming down to this ground, enjoying your football, and you know being as open as you have been to the feedback from me. And uh, you know that is really a good outcome of this conversation. Yeah, I, I'm just not sure how to approach it with Dad. So if you could help me with that. Yeah, so. for sure I'll help you, you know. And I think, um, you know, I've noticed uh, another time I'd like to ask you about who your favourite players are, OK? Because that's, an, but that's another conversation. And I want to try and talk to you about, like, your favourite players and see how they play and how often they swing wide and things like that. But gee, you know, Andy, these are early days. You're 14, to be blunt. You know, you're doing you're doing really well in the club. And um, please understand that that I'm 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 speaking to you about this because I want you to get better and um, to have a brilliant team atmosphere. Thank you, Steve. Okay, so I'll chat after practice. We'll pop down and have a word with your dad, and we'll see where it goes. Don't worry. Don't feel caught between the two of us. I, I trust you. When you when you got the ball at your feet, I trust you. That I do know. Okay, man. Good. Okay, Nick. Awesome. Okay. So, um, I, I mean, well, there's, there's there's loads of things in there. Like, so one of the things that you started with was you, you kept the flow of it's a puzzle that we want to try and solve together. Um, which is a lovely little message for, for coaches, really. Um, but then you said, we, oh, and we want to find the best route for you to take. So that's, that's creating a very kind of empowering environment that's putting it onto the player. Why did you kind of choose to kind of put that back for him in that way? Because I realised in the, that in the middle phase, I didn't emphasise choice enough. And it, it, it feels very important to empower him to stand up with a straight spine and, and be brave enough to say to me, this is how I want to play. Because if he does that, he'll be comfortable in his own skin to say what he thinks and feels. And a player who, a person who is comfortable in their own skin will be much more open to feedback than mm. someone who's, who feels shut down, if not scared. I might drop him or he might have a row with his dad. I mean, this could be, for him, it could be quite a difficult situation. So to give him as much choice as possible and empower him is, is I think, a very important part of this feedback process. Hmm. But what I thought you also cleverly did was you asked for his feedback and thoughts, but you also said, I have some thoughts as well, because as a coach, you know, part of the role of the coach is to help and to teach and to educate and to guide and all of those kind of different things at different times. But ultimately, the coach will have some knowledge. So what I thought you did was position that in a really nice statement that invited him to access your thoughts as opposed to you just dumping them on him. Yeah, and I also felt that in a way, the more modest I am, the better, the faster will be my progress. So that this is just an opening conversation of five, 10 minutes. In six weeks' time, um, I will be able to go to him and say, say to him something like, Andy, listen, man, I want you to do me a big favor today, right? I know it's against your instincts. I don't want you to just swing wide. OK, but now's not the time to say that because I feel mm. I do better sh to show him the respect and give him the opportunity to try and solve this problem for himself. But I can't imagine a coach feeling, ah, oh, Steve, you naive, you don't know coaching. I've got somebody else running up on his left-hand side. What am I going to do with him? You know, so it gets complex. But um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm taking the, you know, the, the, the dramatic license here to sort of think, okay, the ideal is to be modest. Sometimes you can't be. 
And, and I think there's two other points that I thought in there. One was one, and this is probably more of a statement, I guess. What I think that you did with a 14 year old boy was help him find some identity, find some voice, have a choice at a critical time for a young person when they're doing that in that kind of, you know, the biggest change that they're going through in their life in terms of growth and maturation. And you allowed him the opportunity to start to do that. And it's going to develop life skills in Andy, which are massively important. I think we can have and use sport as the vehicle to do that. So I thought that was really, really neat the way that you did that. Yes, I wonder whether I was listening to you speak, whether I wasn't treating him like about a 15 or 16 year old. And um, but I prefer to do that. I mm. prefer to overshoot than undershoot because you undershoot, you start patronizing, you assume he can't make decisions for himself, you tell him what to do. And I don't think he learns. So I, I'd sooner overshoot. I think I was talking to someone who felt like he was about 16. Mm. Um, <laughs> Andy, what, Andy, what did you think? What's your after Daniel Craig? I mean, look, there's, there's cries of NTAs and Oscars and, you know, a role in EastEnders. But what's uh, other than that part? What's your view? How did, you, how did that make you feel on the receiving end of that? Um, I saw a couple of questions in the chat box about was I was I giving a bit too much and possibly a bit more than maybe a, a, a young team would have done. But what I felt was supported through the conversation. Um, the bit about choice, I think, was really interesting. I mean, I've got a 14-year-old daughter. Um, she would, she's definitely capable of making that about, you know, whether we would go and have that conversation with, well, with me in the case, although it would get quite circular seeing as I'm also a coach. But, um, but actually, the choice about how do we want to approach that, I think that was that was a really important part of the conversation. And just switching out of me being young Andy and linking to last week, Curious Coaches Club about, about reflection, I think what's been really interesting is listening to Steve's real time in, in action reflection on what he was doing. Mm. So did I go too far here? I didn't get to answer, ask that question there. He was reviewing his progress, even in a really short conversation, reviewing it in real time, making some, some fantastic decisions about where he needed to go to next. And I know we had some pauses, but I imagine he would be doing that as he was having that conversation anyway. Mm. Um, and there was some incredible uses of pauses at times. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, uh, interesting question in there from uh, from Tim, Steve, is that um, you've allowed him to carry on and play as he wants to play, but what if there's an impact on the rest of the team by allowing Andy to carry on and do that? How might you kind of rephrase that, or is that something that you would get to over a period of weeks? Yeah, I would have thought over a period of time. It's exactly right, you know. What is this guy's positional awareness like? Or is he just self-involved, me scoring goals and I do what I want to do? And am I giving him the wrong message here? Mm. And I imagine it's a journey. And I imagine maybe the next question is, okay, Andy, do whatever you want to do today, but I want you to notice where the other players are. And after the practice of the game, I'm going to ask you, what did you notice? So that opens up the whole thing. And that's... um. A tremendously subtle, I imagine, a tremendously subtle and potentially beautiful journey for him to become socially aware of 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 other other kids. And you know, it's a it's an absolutely wonderful opening for him. But I wouldn't like to dump that on him now, so to speak. You know, mm. one thing at a time. You know, his coach has given him some rough feedback. You know. Um, yeah. No, I, 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 see, I mean, the way that you just set that up is that that is a brilliant question to ask someone as a young player. And, you know, you set that up in training as a game and then all of a sudden you've got them starting to reflect and think about their impacts on others and the way it affects others. And they'll probably come to you with their own answers and and come to the conclusion that's the same that you would have led them to anyway. You know, it's a a beautiful thing about sports and it's something i admire and envy in sports coaches so much which is 
you have the possibility of, of noticing things in real time and entering the actual action arena with players. And so the word, what did you notice? See what you notice and what did you notice? You know, when in my world that comes from counseling and mental health and stuff, you can't enter people's lives. They walk out of your room and, and then chaos unfolds. And mm. the beauty of, of sports coaching is that you can actually work with people as they're learning. And it's, um, when I grow up, I want to be a coach, man. But I, I'm a <laughs> gray, I guess. Uh, look, I, I mean, firstly, you know, we're kind of coming towards the end of it now. We've just got a few minutes left. Um, what I think you've demonstrated for somebody who has real expertise in this, it, and this was an unscripted, you know, you didn't know where Andy was going to go with it. Um, a real unscripted conversation but what we got was some real honest reflections from you as you went along the process to go didn't quite get as far as i did there wanted to make sure i brought that in later on but still used a real kind of clear and consistent framework to do that and and i think your honesty and vulnerability in sharing that wasn't quite as good as i hoped or that was was brilliant so look i mean it, it's a it's a pleasure and a privilege for us to have somebody like yourself come onto the show and I'm wondering what people's two words to capture the art of giving feedback is. In other words, is this a is this a task you carry out? Is it a skill or is it an art? Mm. And uh, you can tell from the way I've been speaking, I believe it's an art form. Literally, it's a thing of, of absolute beauty when it works well. And my two words were offer and curious. Um, nice. I don't, know what, I don't know what yours were, you guys, you, all your coaches listening in, but I wonder what they are. Mm. Yeah, brilliant. Feel free to throw them in. Um, what What would be, Steve, your one takeaway message that you would like to leave the uh, the 150, 160 people that have listened today? What What would be your one takeaway thing? It would be it would be this that when they've tried to understand the difference between super shrinks, super psychiatrists, and pseudo psychiatrists, quite a big field of study, they mm. discovered that the super shrinks are the ones who take feedback from their clients. Literally, those are the guys who get better outcomes, hard outcomes. So my message to you would be not about how to give feedback to a player. But to be, ref to, to be brave and bold enough to take feedback yourself about your own coaching. And, and that next time you give someone feedback, ask them how helpful it was and ask them how you could have made it more helpful. Um, so that would be my take home message to return to oneself and say, OK, how can I be brave enough to take feedback from the people I work with? Because that's how I'm going to get more skilled. Brilliant. That I think that also links really neatly to the session that Andy led last week on reflection because it all kind of links there together. Um, the session that we've got coming up next week, interestingly, is is all about coaching what people might describe as the maverick. You know, the the the, the Dennis Rodman linking it back to the last dance. You know how we go about them, and um, again, it will be a fascinating one to. Uh, to make the links across to that. So if you have registered for that one, make sure you find the new link to that session as well, because we'll, we'll continue to use this platform. The conversation will carry on in Connected Coaches and in Connected Coaches now, there's some links for uh, the conversation, some other pieces of uh, stuff you can read, receiving feedback, providing feedback, uh, lots more information there to follow it up. Um, what we have tried to do today is model something uh, in a very kind of um, EastEnders way or Combination Street for you and in the north um, that, that's taken some real kind of bravery and vulnerability from the two of them. So, so thank you for doing that um, because it's been a real skill uh, and it, uh, you know, so it's great for us to try and unpick it and challenge what is a fantastic process. So Connected Coaches, all of the information on there to continue the conversation. We'll pick up a lot of the questions through that as well. We've got other Time to Learn webinars coming up as well as the Curious Coaches Club next week.
that's the session next week. Um, we've got Chris Marshall from the FA, who's a performance psychologist. He's also Anthony Joshua's psychologist and worked in cricket as well. Uh, and we're also hoping to have a, a UK freestyle canoe coach on with us. So again, that's worked some real kind of different and challenging people in there as well. There's some information about giving us some feedback or accessing a certificate. So if you go on to ukcoaching.org slash we, you can register, you can give us some feedback, but please keep sharing that feedback because that's how we shape and evolve these sessions as well. So just want to say a final thanks to, to Steve, um, to young Andy and to old Andy. Um, everybody that's been on, thank you very much. Have a think, what does it mean to you? How do you reframe and use your own sessions from there? Um, Steve, if you could stay on because we, we live the plan do review and it'd be great to get some feedback from you now as well. But everybody else, thanks very much. Have a fantastic afternoon and we'll see you next week. Bye.